Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay. Gentlemen. Now. We are doing... It's a really, really short video. Uh, but that's okay. If you're new, my name is Connor. Hello, I'm from Rhode Island. Best state in the Union. Bar none. No contest. New England. Uh, better England. Uh, United States in that order and I like to watch uh, videos and and um, yeah watch videos hang out um, so yeah if you're new click all the buttons let's go that was powerful the thunk Well, what we've got here is your longbow. It's a very simple weapon, made famous during the Hundred Years' War, the 14th and the 15th century. It's a very simple thing. It's the heart and the sapwood, the inside and the outside of the yew tree from the tree trunk. The string, it's just linen string. Uh -huh. The out 15th century, it's a very simple thing. It's a short video, I can pause a little. It's the heart and the sapwood, the inside and the outside of the yew tree from the tree trunk. The inside and the outside of the tree, meaning like when you, when you cut a tree, a tree down and look at the rings, there's kind of like a, an inner wood and an outer wood. Is, is that what he mean by inside and outside of, of the wood? The string, it's just linen string. Linen, some tree. Piece of cow horn on each end, and yet you have a weapon that can shoot one of these, it. well over three hundred paces. Okay, so it's. I think it's the inside and outside of the tree put together. Um, what is it, like six feet in length? And then linen string. And then they kind of hammered on or fitted cow horn tips to the end to fasten the tide, uh, secure the tied linen rope. But look at the arrow. It has a barbed point. It's called a broadhead. Once it's inside your body, you can't pull it out. The arrow shaft. Wooden is from the ash. Goose feathers. Wait, question here. What? That doesn't exactly seem like I I've never had an arrow in me, but aren't the ones that are the more like double sided fish hook designs more difficult? Like the arrows, but the sides of the, like the two points on the ends are kind of tipped back. So when you shoot it in, if you rip it out, you're going to rip out additional flesh or organs or, or whatever um it, obviously that would still do a lot of damage the arrow shaft wooden is from the ash goose feathers these are called the fletchings in fact the man who makes the bow is called the bowyer the man who makes the arrow the fletcher the man who makes the arrow point the arrow smith the man who makes the string the string fellow it's all a family business but once you put the whole thing together you've got a murder weapon see what makes it so deadly you can shoot fast. The wounds at the other end, incredibly painful. Let me show you how simple it is. You put the arrow on. You Before we start, I I thought that the that a concurve bow is is more efficient than a one curve bow, like the that you would see like a Mongol horse riders, where like you you bend the bow, you bend the wood like you would a normal bow, and then you bend the two sides back again. And so it's kind of a concurve, so you have to pull it back less to get uh, a still a good amount of power. You look at the target, you bring him back, and simply let him go. I gotta shut up. Incredibly painful. Let me show you how simple it is. You put the arrow on, you look at the target, you bring him back, and simply let him go. You had to train by law, at least from the age of seven. You'd shoot for two hours after church every Sunday. It changes your muscle shape. Your one shoulder on the right thickens. Your right forearm becomes stronger. He would stand there, pouring the arrows down until he felt as if his arms were breaking. The thing about it is, because you train so much, you don't actually look down the arrow. You're looking at You're the so used to it. Time. Sorry, I meant to press pause and I pressed stop recording. I don't even remember what I was going to say. So, uh. Until he felt as if his arms were breaking. 
thing about it is, because you're trying so much, you don't actually look down the arrow. You're looking at the target all of the time. You fix yourself. I remember, it's just amazing, like, when you do something, pick a task, how you do it over and over, and the more tasking things on your brain just become second nature. And I think that's an amazing part about, uh, I guess, what humans are, are capable of doing and learning and how just some things just become second nature. Uh, my point was better. I, fr I butchered it. Sorry. You're looking at the target all of the time. You fix yourself on to that man. Fast, accurate, and under power. But it was all down to simply this. Being able to look at your enemy and put him down. I want to shoot that thing so bad. Awesome video. I know I made it much longer than it needed to be. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to continue reacting to a few more. Hope you're all doing well. If not, sucks. Keep your chin up. You'll be all right. See you next time.